morning, everybody. Ty Metalhead, Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Got quite a bit to talk about in regards to today's moderate risk. So they have expanded the moderate risk area. We talked about this last night on stream. And what we saw here was a area that was mainly towards eastern parts of Iowa. Now it's stretched into Illinois and Wisconsin. We did talk about the possibility of this occurring here did have a southward push as well to go along with that so now we have northern parts of missouri in the mix we do have a pretty large enhanced risk as well that now includes green bay wisconsin we have milwaukee in there as well chicago and of course the cross is like right on the fringe between the enhanced and the moderate we did get a increase on the other threats here the 45 percent wind threat has been stretched out now so we could be seeing significant winds, maybe 80 to 100 miles an hour once again, just like we did on Sunday. In fact, the setup reminds me quite a bit of Sunday. I think the convective mode is going to tell a lot as to what we're going to end up seeing. I think, of course, the wind threat is going to be the main threat. Hail threat's also been bumped up to 45%, a little further off towards the west, of course, towards Omaha. And this is actually pushed a little further to the east now. Before, we were thinking Omaha Lincoln would be the point of interest for storms, but towards southern and southeastern Iowa now, including Des Moines, we could have some very large hail. We could get large hail beyond three inches, maybe even pushing four inches in diameter here. So protect those windshields you're going to need. You're going to need to. I would probably say even put those cars in the garage or the carport and hope for the best there. The tornado threat has also gone up as well. We now have a 15% area. Very concerning to see that. We also have a pretty large hatch risk to go along with it. So pretty much all dimensions of severe weather, all hazards are possible. I do think, again, damaging winds are the main threat. This, I think, is somewhat conditional. If we end up getting discrete cells ahead of the main line with the damaging wind potential, this could definitely verify. But we'll have to see how things pan out here. I do think the threat could exist early into the day, but also last late into the evening. Like I said, really, the convective mode is going to tell us everything here. So getting into the synoptics here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the GFS and the wrap here. We're going to get a look at the jet streak and the trough that are going to be responsible for causing the chaos here, so to speak. So if we can get this roll, here we go. Here's a trough here. Here's the adjacent jet streak to go along with it here. The positioning of this jet streak is going to be key, and this could meander a little bit off to the northeast or to the south. If it meanders a little further to the north, my concern increases for the damaging wind and tornado threat here. But definitely have that. I definitely see that look, though, that I'm very concerned with. Also see over towards southern parts of Missouri where we have some pretty good divergence there as well. So... Even though the main thread is going to be mainly focused and comprised around parts of Iowa, northern Missouri, and also into Wisconsin and Illinois here, we do have to watch these areas a little further to the south. We have slight risk for these areas over towards Arkansas, Tulsa, Oklahoma, even Dallas, Texas today is in a slight risk. So, like I said, very widespread storm threat today. But... Here's our jet streak. Here's our trough. This is late into the evening. This is when things kind of pick up here. That upper level jet actually weakens a little bit as we get later into the evening here. It's kind of the opposite of that low level jet. And then we have to keep an eye out for the following day here. So we go to the wrap. We'll see a pretty similar deal here. We'll go ahead, hit that. And then we'll do the same thing. And what we're mainly looking for here is model congruence. You can easily see that we have a jet streak in a southern or south central Kansas once again. Evidence of divergence here already by the time we get in towards lunchtime and towards the early afternoon. So no real surprises here when the storm threat ramps up from this point. The mid the uh, upper level jet here this jet streak isn't quite as prominent as what the gfs is showing so there's a little bit of discrepancy there do i th think it'll affect the overall outcome not that much i do think everything else is in place to where we wouldn't have to worry about it too much here's a look at our 500 millibar region 
you can see the diffluence right there so like i said right around lunchtime or just a little bit after is when those storms will really start to take off here and this is when the, around this time is when i think the hail threat is going to be greatest which would be 20z so i would say about maybe three o'clock central time and then things really kind of ramp up at that point as we get towards eastern iowa this is when i think we're going to have the highest threat for winds and tornadoes and then as we get later into the evening we lose some of that instability the threat will eventually slow down here we could have storms that last all the way into the overnight from the looks of it though so looking at 700 we're going to go ahead and take a look at what our short waves are looking like we, we went over this last night not really going to be too much different right there just maybe a stronger wind profile in general here you can even see it already we're nearly maxing out what the parameters would usually be for this altitude this is the mid levels of the atmosphere we're looking at we have winds nearly pushing at 80 knots so 90 mile per hour winds in the mid levels definitely kind of screams out hey pay attention damaging winds probably will be the main threat by the time we get into the evening hours and into the overnight here but again like i said before we're about to go ahead and take a look at that low level jet wind profile is favorable for tornadoes we have our speech here already you've seen it turning we have uh we have changing of the winds with height and we also have turning of the winds with height here you can see it based off how these wind barbs are moving that south to north motion that we always talk about Whenever it comes to those more robust severe weather events, it's here. So with that in mind, and you can see the low level jet is really strong too. Typically you would need 30 knots for tornadoes or tornadoes to be possible. We're at 50 plus. And of course, as we know, and we even mentioned it earlier, that low level jet strengthens as we get into the evening in comparison to the upper level jet. Upper level jet kind of weakens as we get later into the evening. Low level jet typically will strengthen more. And we see pretty clear evidence of that as we get into the evening and even into the overnight hour. So could be a pretty active, pretty busy day in regards to our tornado threat. We don't really even need to look at the moisture. We already knew what the deal was with that. Not much has really changed there. We already know that there's going to be a lot of precipitable water. So any tornadoes that do form may not be able to see them due to heavy rain or what we would call HP supercells here. Some things that we do have to look at though is our instability here, our cape. So already, by the time we get just past lunchtime here, early afternoon, we're already at 3,000 joules per kilogram across our entire severe weather area. So Dallas even, Tulsa, 2,000 or 2,900, 3,000 joules per kilogram already. And we continue to see that cape available into the evening into the overnight hours it starts to drop off but keep in mind the threshold for severe weather is usually about maybe 750 to 1000 joules per kilogram we're easily doubling that and in many cases tripling it so i'm not really surprised to see the moderate risk maybe even expand further to the east enhanced risk expand further to the east even but these storms have all that it would need to last into the overnight here so could see a derecho even we could also see quite a few tornadoes i think the hail threat will be the first to kind of taper off as we get later into the evening here now, i normally don't like to look at this unless i see 10 or 15 percent area in regards to the tornado threat but since it's there we're going to go ahead and take a look at our significant tornado parameter and it's interesting to note that early in the day and this will be while i'm at work so it could be a little difficult to try to get this figured out but we do have a pretty significant area right here and like i said the wind profile and this is a perfect example by looking at the hodiograph here looking at our zero to three we do have pretty in, a pretty impressive profile here the wind shear at the zero to one is looking really impressive the upper level shear is looking pretty impressive as well like i said if we can get a convective mode where we have storms out forming out ahead of that main line could be trouble could be early in the afternoon could be mid-afternoon like i said it just really kind of depends on what kind of convective mode we get and as we continue to go forward here i think that this significant tornado parameter gets kind of bumped up because of how that um low and mid-level jet kind of ramps up in the way that it does but <clears throat> like i said convective mode is going to be everything with this if these storms can take in inflow really well too this only will 
aid in the increased tornado threat here. I do think that there could be times within that line where we get those embedded supercells to fire off and maybe some tornadoes would be possible in there. Some of which could even be strong as well, but definitely want to be on the lookout for those discrete cells. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to push this forward beyond that point and make note again, like I said, a lot of attention is going over towards Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, and northern Missouri, but towards southern Missouri and Arkansas here. I do think there's going to be a cap in place, but if you look at some of the parameters here, the shear isn't bad in this region either. The cape is still unstable as we get later into the evening towards this region. So I would not be surprised to see tornadoes over here towards Arkansas, towards Missouri, maybe even Oklahoma as well, some of which could even be strong. Could be a secondary 10% area that pops up here. So I'll have to see how things pan out with that. But nonetheless, it's good. it looks like we have all the makings for a pretty long evening. I wouldn't be concerned with this area right here. I would almost disregard it. I would take a closer look maybe east of Dallas, but if you're west of Dallas and you, you see this right here, don't get me wrong, seeing it is a little bit scary at times, but I wouldn't expect as many storms over towards this area. We'll see if this pans out or not. We're actually going to do it right now by looking at what our simulated radar could look like. So as you can see already, pretty active morning. Multiple shower, uh, numerous showers and thunderstorms coming in. This, however, is not going to hamper our instability. Here's that new line of storms, and this is where the concern begins. And it's right around this time, around 21C. Hopefully by this time I'm available and off work. We end up seeing almost a quasi-linear convective system that is eventually expected to consolidate into a line. And interestingly enough, if we look over towards Arkansas and southern Missouri, look at that. See this little cluster of storms here. That's interesting. We see we see this try it's interesting, whereas yesterday when we were looking at this line of storms, we were mainly seeing more of a squall line, uh, quasi or a QLCS kind of taking shape, or even a bow echo, I would say. These storms are starting to look a little bit more discreet. That is concerning. Like I said, if we get more discrete storms, we could have a big time tornado outbreak. I do think eventually this consolidates into a wind threat, but this kind of is a, a brow raiser, if you will. So I'm going to be watching this extremely close while I'm at work today, and I'm going to do everything I can to get back home and stream here. I've got a lot of complications going on today, so it's going to be a little tricky, but I'm going to try to do what I can to make it work, and if I can, I'll also try to get some help and get some good coverage to help keep the coverage going if I end up having to step away after the fact. With that being said, this is all I got for this video. I'm running way behind. Hopefully, I can even edit this thing, but if you guys do get to see it, appreciate you watching. I'll see you soon. Stay weather aware. Some time, Metalhead Weatherman. Have a good rest of your day.